If you ever find yourself hiking through a mountain valley or walking along a dry riverbed, and suddenly you notice a massive boulder with a strange ribbed, quartz-filled texture running across its surface, stop. Don't walk past it. Don't assume it's just another rock, because what you're looking at could be one of the clearest geological signals of gold lurking in the ground around you. And the reason has nothing to do with luck. It has everything to do with deep earth history, hydrothermal systems, mineral chemistry, and the way pressure fractures create the perfect gold-carrying pathways. Gold does not occur randomly, it follows structure, heat, and time. When superheated water rises from underground magmatic bodies, it carries dissolved silica, metals, and trace elements with it. As that boiling fluid forces itself upward, it infiltrates cracks, fractures, and weaknesses in hard host rock. When that fluid cools, the silica turns into quartz. The metals precipitate out and the fracture becomes sealed. Over millions of years, the quartz hardens, the pressure changes, and the rocks shift, leaving behind a geological signature, a quartz vein. But not all quartz veins are equal. Some are barren, some look promising but lack metallic mineralization. Others, rare ones, show a texture that immediately grabs the attention of every seasoned prospector. A rib-like ladder pattern, pressure-filled quartz network that slices across a host boulder. And when you see these tight, parallel quartz in fillings, especially when they run in repeated bands, it's a geological confession, a quiet truth, a signal that the same hydrothermal system responsible for forming that vein may have dropped gold nearby. This specific texture tells you something important. The boulder wasn't formed gently. It was fractured, pressurized, infused, then healed by mineral-rich fluids. The more intense the fracturing and healing, the higher the chances that metals, including gold, were left behind inside or very close to the vein system. Look closely at the quartz itself. If you see smoky tones, iron staining, rusty streaks, or tiny specks of metallic luster locked inside the quartz, that's not decoration. That's the fingerprint of mineralization. In geology, every color stands for a chemical process. Red and orange staining often signal iron oxides. The weathered remains of pyrite. And where pyrite exists, gold is often nearby. Not inside the visible iron. Gold hides microscopically, dispersed in the same systems that generate sulfide minerals. Now observe the host rock. Is it granite, schist, metamorphosed volcanic rock? The type matters. Granitic terrain with high silica content is a strong environment for quartz gold veins. Schist zones tend to host structurally controlled gold deposits. And if the quartz vein cuts through dark volcanic rock, the contrast between brittle volcanic parent rock and the invading quartz often creates perfect traps for gold deposition during hydrothermal cooling. Next, check the orientation. Does the quartz vein run straight across the boulder? Does it branch? Does it form a zigzag? Straight, clean veins often indicate a single pulse of fluid. Multi-branch or zigzag patterns tell you there were multiple events, each one adding more minerals. Repeated events mean repeated chances for gold to settle. Sometimes the richest veins come from reactivated fractures that filled over and over again through geological time. The most interesting texture appears when the quartz forms a ladder vein pattern, thin parallel segments that look like rungs. These textures appear when rocks undergo repeated shearing. Each shear event splits the rock slightly, and each pulse of mineral-rich water cements it back. This is the same structural environment that forms gold-bearing veins in major mining districts across the United States. From the mother lode belt of California 
to the gold systems of Nevada and Colorado. But here's the part most people ignore. Gold often escapes the vein itself. When pressure shifts, gold-bearing fluids may leak outward. They move into surrounding rock, spread into microfractures, and settle along the edges rather than in the center of the main quartz vein. That's why you might not see gold in the exposed quartz on the boulder. Yet gold could be just meters away in the subsurface rock. A boulder with the right quartz texture is like a billboard from nature. It tells you that the entire area once hosted a hydrothermal engine powerful enough to transport and deposit heavy metals. It also tells you that weathering, erosion, and uplift have since exposed the system. If a boulder broke off from a larger vein system uphill, the gold source is not at the boulder. It's higher up the slope, near the fracture zones where the veins originated. So follow the boulder's orientation, trace its alignment, find the direction from which it likely fell. The bedrock above may contain the original vein outcrop, sometimes called the mother vein. Even if the main vein is eroded, fragmented pieces like this boulder reveal the exact geological environment that once produced gold. Now inspect for secondary clues. Are there angular quartz fragments scattered around the area? Does the soil contain white shards? Is the ground stained with rust? Quartz float, loose quartz fragments at the surface, often lead to hidden veins. Rusty soil indicates iron oxidation, a classic companion to gold-bearing sulfide systems. Listen for the sound the quartz makes when tapped. Hard glassy quartz with a sharp ring indicates strong crystallization. This often forms under deeper, hotter conditions, conditions more favorable for gold precipitation than shallow veins formed by low temperature fluids. If you see vugs, small cavities inside the quartz, pay attention. Vugs are spaces where crystals grew freely. These conditions often signal a sudden pressure drop in the hydrothermal system, a moment when gold can rapidly precipitate out of solution. Sometimes gold forms in these cavities, but more commonly, the gold form within microfractures around the bugs. Look for subtle signs of sulfides. Even if the rock has weathered for thousands of years, tiny remnants may remain. Cubic molds where pyrite used to be, brassy reflections locked deep in the quartz, or dark streaks of oxidized minerals. When pyrite oxidizes, it leaves rusty halos in the rock. They don't exactly tell you this in the bank lobby. They don't print it on your monthly statement, but behind closed doors, deep in boardrooms, there are people who watch you when you lust after raw gold and not always in admiration, because raw gold threatens something far more fundamental than your bank account. It threatens their power, their profits, and the entire structure of the modern financial system. Welcome to EGS Pro, where today we peel back the curtain. We expose why banks are quietly discouraging raw gold ownership, and why buying raw gold is not just a personal purchase, it's a political act. By the end of this story, you'll see raw gold not only as a hedge, but as a challenge to the status quo, with banks urgently trying to steer you away. You feel it in the gold price, don't you? It surges when inflation whispers at your door. It rallies when global uncertainty climbs. Central banks scoop it up in tons, often when other markets tremble. In 2024, for example, demand for gold as an investment asset reached a record $90.6 billion, according to the World Gold Council. And that number has only climbed in first quarter 2025. Physical gold demand surging, central banks increasing holdings, investors turning towards safe havens. If gold is such a coveted asset, then why does your bank act like it's a liability? Why do many financial advisors warn you about raw gold while pushing products with fees, complex instruments, or intangible assets instead? Because raw gold strips away the middlemen. It bypasses many of the profit centers banks rely on, 
fees for storage, premiums on paper gold, high spreads, complicated financial products. When you hold raw gold, the power shifts more toward you and less toward them. Consider this. ETFs and financial derivatives offer gold exposure without the hassles of physical ownership. Banks love those. You never see raw bars cluttering their vaults unless they're earning interest or insurance from them. And when physical gold is involved, the premiums, the logistics, the regulations, they ensure you always pay for convenience, not for purity or ownership. There's hard data behind that observation. Gold ETFs, exchange-traded funds, in the first half of 2025 saw an inflow of $38 billion, the largest semi-annual addition since early 2020. People want exposure, they want safety. But raw gold, owning bars, coins, or nuggets? That comes with responsibility, risk, and inefficiency, unless you know how to reduce those costs. Banks and financial institutions often discourage raw gold ownership because there are associated costs, storage, insurance, transport, authenticity verification. These are all less profitable for banks when you own the gold outright. If you buy paper gold or gold funds, they benefit from commissions, fees, currency spreads, derivatives trade. The more intermediaries between you and the gold, the more income flows into financial sectors, not into your hands. Also, raw gold is illiquid compared to stocks or bonds. If you want to convert raw gold quickly into cash, you often lose part of its value in buy-sell spreads or shipping. Banks and finance firms understand this intensely, and they position other assets as more liquid, more efficient, more smart. But this is partly psychological control, because you accepting their pivot away from raw gold means more control stays with them. Then there's regulation. Some banks actually block or discourage clients from buying physical gold products, especially in certain countries like China, where banks have flagged or reclassified physical gold products to reduce exposures. It's not always illegal. Often, it's just friction. Extra paperwork, higher premiums, lower advice quality, incentivizing you to go with gold funds or ETFs instead. Despite all this, raw gold has something no ETF or bank account can promise. True ownership, zero counterparty risk, and resilience in wartime or financial crisis. During economic storms, currencies collapse, financial systems fail, but gold keeps value. And banks, especially ones with large reserves, know this. That's why central banks continue buying gold even when real yields rise. Because gold is not just investment, it is insurance against collapse. But raw gold doesn't offer dividends or interest. That's a fact banks trumpet loudly. They argue you're losing money by holding gold rather than stocks, bonds, or savings. They point to opportunity cost. And this works psychologically because people naturally compare growth, stocks with non-yielding assets, gold, often neglecting gold's role as a hedge. Here's where the suspension grows. When real interest rates are high, Gold tends to underperform because you could put money in bonds or savings and get yield. But when real rates fall or inflation rises, gold outpaces almost everything else. As of early 2025, global economic conditions have pushed many countries toward uncertainty. Inflation pressures, geopolitical risk, supply chain disruptions. In that environment, raw gold shines. Banks anticipate volatility. They dread gold-driven runs because liquidity becomes an issue and their control over capital is challenged. So what does all this mean for you? It means that when your bank discourages raw gold, when your advisor suggests ETFs instead, when you see fees and spreading quoted as reasons not to buy bars, you're witnessing resistance. Resistance against owning something so simple, so old, so powerful, that it doesn't rely on digital systems or bank intermediaries. Your ownership of raw gold diminishes layers of financial control. Here on EGS Pro, we believe knowing this is your power. Because once you understand why banks don't want you holding raw gold, you can decide for yourself. You can weigh the costs, compare the benefits, and see if raw gold doesn't become a part of your broader strategy. Not all gold, not all assets, but raw gold, pure, physical, under your control, may be one of the safest wealth anchors in uncertain times. 
The moment you decide to step outside the bank's comfort zone and hold raw gold in your hand, you'll begin to notice something. The language changes. Suddenly, advisors and brochures use words like inconvenient, outdated, risky. They say gold is for collectors or inefficient compared to modern instruments. But numbers reveal the real story, and they're far harder to ignore than the carefully chosen phrases of financial marketing. Gold is one of the most liquid commodities. Dealers operate daily, spreads often between 1% to 3%, depending on purity and form. Compare that to hidden charges in financial products, currency conversions, ETF liquidation fees, brokerage costs, and the liquidity argument weakens. What the banks truly fear is that raw gold requires no middleman to release your wealth. Think about that the next time someone calls raw gold inefficient. Inefficient for who? For you or for them? Now let's examine performance. Over the last 20 years, gold has outperformed many fiat currencies by wide margins. An ounce of gold in 2005 was worth around $430. By 2025, that same ounce trades near $2,450, a gain of nearly $2,450, 470%. During the same period, the US dollar lost about 30% of its purchasing power due to inflation. Gold doesn't pay dividends, but it silently preserves value across decades, outlasting political promises and bank guarantees alike. Of course, no investment is perfect. Raw gold comes with its own shadows, verification risks, counterfeit products, theft potential. But knowledge reduces those risks. Simple measures like buying from verified dealers, testing with portable density kits, or using third-party vaults can safeguard your position. The point is, these are problems you can control. Unlike the invisible games banks play with derivatives, debt, and inflation. So let's pull the lens back. Why don't banks want you buying raw gold? Because it represents independence. Because it's one of the few assets immune to manipulation once you hold it. Because it competes directly with their products. And because in times of crisis, raw gold makes you less reliant on them. This is not financial advice. It is financial awareness. It's seeing the bigger picture. It's understanding that when the bank discourages raw gold, it's less about protecting you and more about protecting themselves. So if you value independence, if you want to safeguard your purchasing power, and if you want wealth that doesn't vanish with a keystroke, raw gold belongs in your story. Stay with us for more revelations, more strategies, and more untold stories that banks would rather you never hear.